Hi, I'm Natasha. Thanks for joining me again today. I have a question for you. Can you think of a time when you were afraid of something but then later realized that it was totally unnecessary? I remember this one night I was sitting on my bed and I saw a huge spider. But then I realized, you know, it's God's creation and spiders are good for nature. So it was totally irrational and it was an unnecessary fear. Well, in today's God story, we'll see that when we focus on Jesus, we don't need to be afraid. Let's check this out. Okay, okay. So these two guys walk into a bar. Ouch. What's up, everybody? It's Jimmy again. So when I was younger, I actually hated roller coasters. I have an older sister who liked all of the roller coasters and isn't scared of anything. So we went to this amusement park, and I was pretty ready to go on like the swan ride and the teacup ride, but my sister Joy said to me, it's time for you to try something new. You can't be scared all of your life. We'll go on this other roller coaster, and it does not go upside down. So we go to the front of the amusement park, and we go up onto the platform and get ready to go onto this ride. And the way that this roller coaster was sort of situated is I, I could see the first drop, but I couldn't see anything else that the roller coaster did. So we went around the corner and then up the hill, t -t 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 we went and then we leveled off and I could see the rest of the roller coaster. And not only did it go upside down, but it had like three or four corkscrew and barrel rolls. And so I remember looking over at my sister and being like, you lied to me. And she said, eh, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do now. And it turns out, I really loved it. It was a lot of fun, and I can't get enough of roller coasters now. And that leads me to today's big idea, is that when we focus on Jesus, we don't need to be afraid. So you remember from a little while ago, we talked about the calling of these disciples, this group of young men, disciples, 12 of them uh, to be clear, to follow him, to be his disciples, to leave their old way, to turn to this new way. And in that group of 12, there's sort of like an inner circle, one of whom stands out quite a bit, and we'll be learning more and more about him as the weeks go on. It's Peter. Okay, so Matthew 14 is where we're headed today, and Jesus has been like on a miracle tear. He's been showing his disciples how to help care for, serve, and heal the poor, and then he feeds 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fishes, and there's food left over, a huge miracle. And then the next story starts in verse 22. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. And after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. It's kind of cool how God is. He's just like, let's chill out for a bit. He actually goes off to pray, to just be alone, to, to settle things down a little bit. Okay, so picking up the story again in Matthew chapter 14, verse 25. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once and he said, don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Okay, so I love that line. Jesus right away says, don't be afraid. Take courage because I am here. That's important for us today. Anytime we're afraid, we can be reminded that Jesus is with us and that we can take courage. Okay, so back to the story, starting in verse uh, 28. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. So it's easy to think in this story, Peter, dude, relax, do what Jesus is saying. Why are you so freaked out? But we have to understand is that the Jews, all of them were scared at the time of water. These bodies of water represented chaos, death. Uh, all that was scary about the world was represented in water. You did not understand what was going on down there in the depths. The Hebrew word for water there is actually to home, chaos. And so Jesus comes to them walking on the water and Peter shows great faith. He sees Jesus Lord over everything now, even over death and chaos. And he says, if it's you, tell me to come to you. And so he takes a step out of the boat 
everything that he was used to and into Who? faith towards Jesus. And he starts walking on water and then he starts to, to sink. He gets freaked out and Jesus takes his hand and says, take courage, stay with me here. Now that's a lesson for us today. We all face challenges. There are lots of things in our lives, whether it be maybe a friendship at school that you're not sure where it's going. Maybe it's an exam that you have coming up. Maybe it's something that's happening at home with your family that just feels like you're sinking. Maybe it's something just as simple as like going on a roller coaster. Jesus says to us, take courage. I'm here. There's nothing to be afraid of. So let's keep reading. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. And then the disciples worshiped him saying, you really are the son of God, they exclaimed. Now there's one line in there that you may have missed. I know I did when I first read it, and that's this. Jesus immediately reaches out for Peter. And that's a lesson for us today that Jesus always, with no buts, is there for us. And so that he gets back into the boat and immediately everything changes. Everything has changed in that moment. The wind dies down, the waves die down, and they look to Jesus and realize this, he is who he says he is. This really is the son of God. So it's true that worries and fears are, are, those are normal things. They can distract us, but they are normal things. But the message of Jesus is just different. That no matter how high or low, no matter whether you're at the top of the roller coaster or shooting through the loops, whether you're sinking or you're swimming, Jesus doesn't change. He is there and you can take courage. Even in the deepest fears, you can rely on Jesus. In fact, that's today's big idea, that when we focus on Jesus, we don't need to be afraid. It's been great to be together today. My name's Jimmy. We'll see you next time. I've heard this God story before, but it was an amazing reminder of how we can trust Jesus no matter how unsettling the situation. Although it's impossible to compare anything in our lives with how amazingly Jesus takes care of us, I thought I'd share this story about dog guides who take amazing care of their humans in ways that will blow your mind. Watch this. Hey, it's Linda, and it's great to be hanging out with you today. People can sometimes go through tough times due to health problems, and they can even experience fear in that. But we know that having Jesus in our lives, we don't have to be afraid. But sometimes a little bit of extra help can help us manage our circumstances even better. We visited Dog Guides Canada and got a glimpse into how dog guides can change people's lives and help give them peace of mind when they're challenged with specific health problems. So the qualities that we look for in our dogs, we want dogs that are caring, that love to work for people, that are natural learners. So for a dog who's very sniffy, a little bit higher in energy, we'd be perfect for a diabetic alert program. Uh, versus a dog, let's say, that's super bomb-proof, that's really confident, we'd be perfect for the canine vision program. So we really try to play up on the dog's natural abilities. So a lot of the times when someone loses their vision, they do tend to lose confidence in themselves. So the dogs bring that element of safety to, to the client, that element of, of independence. I'm Sandra, I'm 44 years old. I was part of the canine vision program and I got my canine vision dog, Kylie. She is my trained guide dog where she helps me when I'm outside. She's my trusted companion, and she's like my daughter, the daughter that I've never had. Okay, let's go find the elevator buttons. I had a lot of panic attacks going out into the street, going to the mall. I would just, I would avoid it at all costs because I was just so scared to do it. Oh. I would cross into a path and get hit by a grocery cart because I didn't see it coming. And I would be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And the person would be like, what are you, blind or something? Yeah. It's the dog's responsibility to get them there safely and effectively by navigating obstacles, stopping at curbs to indicate to the client that they've reached an intersection, uh, et cetera, et cetera. When we get closer to the traffic, and I can hear it, I'll ask her to find the down curve, and that's where a guide dog will stop. 
Some streets in the city of Toronto have an audible button. With the audible buttons, for north-south is one signal and for east-west is a different, so you actually know what direction you're going into. I have to learn the traffic, so I can hear the east-west cars are stopped and that the north-south cars are going, and I know we can cross the street safely. She's my eyes, so she directs me where I need to go. I feel much, much safer being with her, being out on the road with her, being out anywhere with her. The dogs are an added tool that the person already uses to manage, um, let's say, their diabetes or, or any medical condition that they may have. With a diabetic service dog, it's a little bit different because a diabetic service dog is trained to learn the scent of when their client goes into a low sugar. So once they go into that low sugar, the dog is trained to go get the insulin candy kit and bring it to their client. This way the client can either take their insulin, take that little bit of candy or whatnot. The kit will always remain in the same area for the dog and it's always in a low area that the dog can get to. If the dog notices that the diabetic client is not coming out of that diabetic low, there's a special phone that the dog can dial the emergency contact for the diabetic person, for emergency personnel to arrive. With me, my fear was I didn't even want to leave the condo at one point. I was just too scared to leave here. My fears of being blind and not being able to do things are almost not there anymore. I can do things and I can do them with her help. I have less panic and anxiety attacks right now when I'm with her. Her and I have created a bond and it's basically like unconditional love between the both of us. The people and dogs at Dog Guides Canada do phenomenal work and we have so much respect and appreciation for them. If you're a dog lover and feel like you can help in any way, reach out to them and show your love and concern for others by taking the dogs for a walk or helping out with any other needs they may have. It's horrible to live in fear, and it was amazing how these dog guides could help humans overcome their fears by being there for them. Think of this, if dogs can change humans' lives by supporting them when they need help, can you imagine how much Jesus can change your life when you focus on him? Jesus is with us day and night, and we can always share our fears with him, whether that be something huge or something that may seem insignificant to others. Let's break into our small groups now and see what this looks like in our own stories.